This is sad news for anyone who's a fan of heavyweight boxing like I am. Luis Ortiz has withdrawn from his scheduled fight against Alexander Ustinov, which was to be part of the WBA heavyweight tournament. It was going to take place on September 17th on the undercard of Canelo versus Liam Smith on HBO pay-per-view. According to Vlad Huronov, who is the promoter for Alexander Ustinov, he says, or he seems to imply, that Ortiz has pulled out for no other reason than he wants to sever his contract with Golden Boy. Now, if this is true, and, and uh, Huronov says that he intends to sue Luis Ortiz as well, because he says contracts were signed, agreements were done, it was all in ink, and according to him, Luis Ortiz has violated. He says he's got no issue with Golden Boy Promotions, they acted in good faith, but he's got an issue with Luis Ortiz. Now, if this is true, if he's pulled out of the fight to try and sever his contract with Golden Boy, it is extremely, extremely unusual timing. And the only way I can make sense of it is if there's some serious, very serious contractual dispute between Ortiz and Golden Boy. Because look, Ortiz was about to go into the biggest fight of his career by far on a massive platform, the kind of platform he's never been on before. And Ortiz needs that kind of platform. He needs that kind of exposure because he has literally no fan base. He don't speak English. He's like 35, 36 years old. Nobody wants to give him a title shot, so he needs the biggest platform possible and he was about to get it. So to be pulling out just a few weeks before the fight of such a great opportunity, there must be something seriously, seriously wrong with his relationship with Golden Boy. And as I say, I'm going to speculate, but the only logical explanation I can theorize and come up with is that maybe... He had his legal team look at the contract for the Houston of fight. And perhaps there was something in there about if he goes through with fighting Houston of, he'll be tied to Golden Boy for a certain number of fights afterwards or a certain time period afterwards. And maybe he thought, you know what? No, I can't. I can't do that. Because Golden Boy are not going to get me a shot at a heavyweight title quickly enough. As I say, Houston of is on the WBA heavyweight title route. And that is a very, very long route indeed, it seems at the moment, because Tyson Fury is the WBA super champion. And we don't know when Tyson Fury is going to fight Klitschko. That seems to be taking a very, very long time to come to fruition. If and when that fight takes place, the winner of that fight is then going to probably have a couple of, of voluntary defenses because this WBA heavyweight tournament is, will be ongoing. If Ortiz was to beat Houston off, he would then have to fight somebody else after that. And then after that, eventually get his shot at the WBA super title against whoever held it at the time. So realistically, Ortiz would, be have, would have to wait about two years at least to get a shot at the real WBA heavyweight title. And at 36 years old or whatever he is, he don't have that time to waste. So... I can understand him wanting to break away from Golden Boy Promotions, but the timing is just bizarre. And it's obviously disappointing for people like me who wanted to see that fight with Ustinov. In the long run, though, it might actually be better for Ortiz and for people like me who like watching him fight, depending on who he decides to sign with. If, if he successfully severs ties with Golden Boy and it doesn't get drawn out into some legal problem which keeps him out of the ring for a ridiculous amount of time. We've seen that happen with fighters before. If he does manage to sever ties with Golden Boy fairly quickly, if he signs with the right guy and there is only one person to sign with if you're a heavyweight in the United States, the other guys are just not an option. If he signs with the right guy, it could be a good thing. Now, let me tell you the, the uh, promoters in America who Luis Ortiz should not be signing with. He should not be signing with Kathy Duva. She's a very small promotional outfit. She's only got one heavyweight, and that is Glasgow. She used to work with Cunningham, but Cunningham has since left. So forget about signing with Kathy Duva. She's a small outfit. 
her whole promotional company really is just about promoting Sergey Kovalev at this point. So forget about her. Another promoter that Ortiz should not sign with is Don King. Don King is all but washed up now. He's got very few fighters across the board, never mind just at heavyweight. And his only heavyweight that he's got is Berman Stavern. He might also have Molina as well. Eric Molina. I'm not sure if is, is Eric Molina with Don King? I'm not sure now, but he might have Eric Molina as well. Either way, Don King don't have many heavyweights. He certainly don't have a heavyweight champion. Luis Ortiz also should not sign with Bob Arum. Bob Arum only has one heavyweight of any note at the moment, and that is Andy Ruiz. Andy Ruiz has been with Bob Arum from the start, and he is coming up for his 29th fight in a few weeks' time, and that fight will be for the NABF heavyweight title. 29 fights in, and Bob Arum hasn't even got this guy a fight against a top 15 contender, never mind a heavyweight title shot. And he's only just fighting for the NABF title. And his 29th fight, <laughs> that is not where Luis Ortiz wants to go. No way. He'll be sitting on a shelf even longer if he signed to Bob Arum than he's been sitting on a shelf being with Golden Boy. So the only option left is to sign with Al Heyman. Now, some people, by reflex action, just hate Al Heyman for whatever reason. But let me tell you why, if you're a heavyweight based in the United States, the only sensible option, particularly for someone in Luis Ortiz's position, who's getting on in age and who's avoided and who don't have a fan base and don't speak English, let me tell you why someone in Ortiz's position, the only option for them is to sign with Uncle Al. Al Heyman signed Chris Ariola a couple of years ago. Yeah? Chris Ariola, for most of his career, was not with Al Heyman. He was with Al Heyman a relatively short space of time, and Al Heyman got him a shot against Berman Stavern for the uh, vacant WBC heavyweight title. So he delivered for Ariola very quickly. Now, after that, obviously, Ariola lost that fight. He managed to get another one of his fighters, Deontay Wilder, a shot at the heavyweight title. And remember, Wilder also hadn't been with Al Heyman his whole career. Wilder only signed with Al Heyman in 2013. Go check this up. Go check this out. He signed with Heyman in 2013, and Heyman got him a shot at a heavyweight title in 2014. One year with Uncle Al, and he delivered him a heavyweight title shot. So he had two of his fighters fight for the title in a very short space of time for the heavyweight title. So then, Wilder's holding the WBC title. Okay? Defends against Eric Molina. Defends against Dupar. Then in his next defense of the title, he fought Artur Spilka, another Heyman fighter. So he got Artur Spilka a shot at the heavyweight title. Yeah? Then after that, he got another one of his fighters, Charles Martin, a shot at the IBF heavyweight title. Right, now, jo uh, uh, then he had that guy go and fight Joshua. Joshua took the title. Then he had another one of his fighters, Dominic Brazil, get a shot at the heavyweight title. <laughs> yeah? And then after that, he had Ariola get a second shot at the heavyweight title. All of these shots at a heavyweight title in a very short space of time for Al Heyman fighters. Plus, Al Heyman has far more heavyweight contenders than any of the other promoters in the United States. He's got the heavyweight champion, obviously, Wilder, so he can get you a shot at Wilder because Wilder's on his books. He's got Gerald Washington. He's got Eddie Chambers. He's got Steve Cunningham. He's got Dominic Brazil. He's got Charles Martin. He's got, God, several other Heavyweight contender. Now, I'm not saying these are all great fighters, but, you know, who cares? He has heavyweights. Who have the other promoters got? They've got nobody in America. On top of that, Uncle Al has got the biggest platform with PBC. He's got fights on loads of different channels or shows on loads of different channels. So with Al Heyman 
fighters have the opportunity to to fight very often because he has so many shows. Whereas with if, if you're with Bob Arum, he don't do half as many shows as Al Heyman does. So you're not you're not gonna get as many opportunities to fight. It's just that simple. So Al Heyman is the only place that Ortiz needs to be signing. If he don't sign with Al Heyman, he is stupid. And unfortunately, Cuban fighters, in my experience, don't have a very good track record when it comes to being business savvy. Most of them have seem to have no idea what they're doing. I mean, you look at Guillermo Rigondeau signing with Carib Promotions. Terrible move. Look at Yuriorkis Gamboa signing with 50 Cent. Terrible move. You know, you look at the business decisions of Odlinir Solis and Mike Perez, etc., etc. The only Cuban of that, I guess you could say, generation who made sensible business decisions was Eris Landilara. Him and him alone. Everybody else was up to foolishness and they were making very, very bad business decisions. I hope Ortiz takes a leaf out of Lara's book and signs with Al Heyman and he don't try and go the, the route of a Rigando or any of these other Cubans who have made very bad business decisions. We'll see where it goes. So, yeah, if he manages to split from Golden Boy quickly and signs with Uncle Al, I think Uncle Al will be able to deliver him a title shot very, very quickly. He might even say, you know what, Wilder? You've been sitting on that WBC title for a while. Let's throw you in with the real King Kong on PBC. Let's see if you can handle that because that's a win-win for Uncle Al. Luis Ortiz has got a very fan-friendly style. If he showcases him on PBC, maybe he gets the Spanish supporters behind him. Uh, you know, not just Cubans, all, all types of different Latino fans could get behind Luis Ortiz if he's showcasing him on PBC. Get them behind him, get a following, get him in there with Deontay Wilder. Most people will be picking Ortiz to knock Wilder out if that fight was made. And I think I'd be one of them. <laughs> And also, maybe he'll be, he'll be able to get Ortiz a shot at Anthony Joshua or whoever has the IBF title in, you know, 6, 8, 10, 12 months' time. Because he certainly managed to do it previously with uh, Dominic Brazil. Obviously, Brazil's not as dangerous as Ortiz, but still, Al Heyman has got a proven track record of delivering heavyweight title shots over the past few years. Quickly as well. Like I said, Wilder signed with him in 2013, and he got a heavyweight title shot in 2014. Yeah, it's very, very quick. <laughs> it was either 2014 or was it early 2015? Either way, it was about a year anyway. I think it was 2014 in the winter. So we'll see where this goes, people. As I say, obviously disappointed that the Houston fight is not going ahead, but Ortiz needs to get a move on, man. He's getting no younger. He needs to get that heavyweight title shot quickly. And a WBA route just is not viable for getting a, a quick shot at the heavyweight title. That seems obvious to me. So he had to sever ties with Golden Boy. The timing just seems very strange. <laughs> Drop your comments in the comment section below, people. Let me know how you feel about this particular story. It's your boy, Hatman. I'm out.